that wants to be a professional player or be anywhere professionally, period. It's about networking, about talking to people, going to going to events, being able to walk into different rooms and being able to hold conversations. I think it's one of the most important things that everybody uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of import of the week with us today we have Gilbert Brown of Apoel Lab BC hi Gil how are you I'm doing good yourself I'm doing well thank you for asking שולברן מכניסייה טובה, נותף את הכדור, בראון רץ קדימה, מסיים בדנק. ראשון, ואנחנו לוקחים זריקות טובות, הן פשוט לא נכנסות, ביקשתי מהשחקנים להתרכז יותר. תודה רבה, פקאט, בינתיים נפטרינקו מצד אחד. בראון עם הסטפק הזה, וואו. בצד השני בידיו של ג'נקינס, ששוב נכנס, עכשיו מוציא את זה לבן שימול. בראון לשלשה, יש לו את הטווחים האלה, הנה השלשה של גילבר בראון. נסדר את החיילים. הכדור הזה יוצא לגילבר בראון לשלשה ראשונה. גבע, נוציא את זה לבראון מהפינה. מדייק. גילבר בראון, שמונה נקודות, זה כמו כל הנקודות. We're jumping right in and uh, we're talking to Gil about his high school experience and about his college experience with uh, Pittsburgh Panthers uh, many years ago? Many years ago. I've okay. been in high school for about nine years now, since okay. 2011. Nice. Um, I grew up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, born and raised. Um, mother and father, older brother. You know, father was a, was a great athlete and my mother and grandfather was a great athlete as well. So it kind of just was something that I fell into, like my family loved sports. And, but I got in trouble when I was around 13 years old, 14 years old, and I got sent away to a prep school in Maryland. That's where I met my basketball coach, Rafael Chilios. So that's where he first told me, he's like, I think you can get a scholarship, you can be great in basketball. So for two years I spent in Maryland, I, I grew, what, seven inches in one summer from 5'9 to 6'4". And that's when I started to take basketball serious. So from that point on, I spent two years in Maryland, then transferred to a school in Connecticut called the South Kent School. Mm -hmm. And I spent three years there and I graduated, you know, one of the top players in the country, you know, and finished off with my degree and went on to the University of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And that was... That was, a, that was a time because it was uh, between University of Pittsburgh and University of Miami. Okay. For me and my, my college, uh, like boiling down to my last college decisions. So in a way I kind of felt like I wanted to go home because I've been away from home for five years in high school and I kind of just wanted my family and people to be able to come and see me play because I was always gone or always away in Connecticut and that's a five, six hour drive up to South Kent in the middle of nowhere. Right. <laughs> That, that's a very different uh, uh, journey you had. Yeah. That in college, basically, you said, I want to go home, and around the corner, you had a great school by itself, and you got recruited by it, so you didn't yeah. have to be a walk-on or anything of that nature. Nah, it's kind of crazy how it all happened, you know. With all the uh, colleges coming in and scholarships and talking to all the coaches, before uh, Pittsburgh even came in, like Wake Forest was really high on my list. Okay. You know, Skip Prosser, rest in peace, was a yeah. great coach, you know, recruited me well. Um, and just, they had uh, great years back then, yeah, too. I remember my junior year, when I was on an unofficial visit. It's me and uh, Andre Blatch and the team, and they played Duke. And this is when Chris Paul and Justin Gray are there. Yeah. And then, you know, just Eric Williams? Eric Williams. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, they had a great roster back then. Great roster. And just mm -hmm. going there and seeing the atmosphere of an ACC game, mm -hmm. playing against a rival school dude, like, it, was, it was amazing to me. So like my, my mind was kind of set on going to the ACC and like Wake Forest was at the top of the list before like Miami really came out. And then like, I want to say at the end of my junior year, 
right at the end before like AAU started Pittsburgh came mm -hmm. and it was uh, Barry Rorison Slice yeah. as yeah. they call him absolutely <laughs> he came in and like from there I was so top five school in the country wow I'm, I'm in my home state you know it was like I just I kind of like signed a check before even looking at what was on it that's awesome. He he'll be he would be happy to hear about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I heard great uh, things about him. Uh, yeah. And uh, when I came to St. Francis, there were all stories about how great of a recruiter he is. So oh, he, he's. I think, especially in my era of college basketball, Slice is probably one of the best recruiters in the game. Awesome. And it's not even necessarily getting the top top talent, but he found the talent that a lot of people. We may regard as just decent players or just go under guys. the radar in a way. Yeah. Okay. You know, when you go look yeah. at especially our rosters from the University of Pittsburgh, Absolutely. I feel like I think I was actually the highest rated recruit until like uh, Dante Taylor came to McDonald's All American. Mm -hmm. And it goes just to show you how successful he was at finding guys like LeVance Fields and, yep. you know, Terrell Biggs and, you know, the Carl Krausers and guys like, like that. Taft. Tap Chris Taft from yeah. Severian. There's another New York guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you see the success that we had at the University of Pittsburgh. Right. You know, and you know, I always thought to myself about like I remember I was going through a little bit of trouble my my first year of school, and I mm -hmm. thought about transferring. You know, like maybe I should have went to the University of Miami. But I, in hindsight, I don't regret it because I think you know staying at the University of Pittsburgh was probably some of the most memorable years that I'll ever had. And the teams that I played on was, were, you know, great. They were elite teams. We made Absolutely. it to the Elite Eight. You know, we are the number one team in the country. We did a lot. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And um, we're drifting uh, into stories about big, bigger schools. But uh, what the channel is about is about uh, guys coming from smaller schools or coming from behind. And yeah. uh, uh, we spoke about the fact that you had to be away for other reasons. You had to be away from home. And had to deal with other things uh, early on in your mm -hmm. high school uh, uh, career or in high school life and you found the way through and, yeah. and uh, uh, basketball basically uh, took you far it took me far so uh, next question how did you end up here in Elat Israel it's funny you know after last year in Germany and it was a horrible experience you know with the coaches with the staff and everything out there and it was something I didn't expect it almost made me want to stop playing. But, you know, through the summertime, I started to feel better. I started to feel healthy. Uh, an agent had reached out to me, uh, Ross Gow, from out here in Israel. He was like, you're a first division player. Come out here playing the second division. And I guarantee that like, you'll end up where you're supposed to be. So, you know, that drive. So for Ross's idea that was uh, come back to second league and work your way back up to where you belong. Yeah. That that's, that's was his initial idea yeah he, he told me you know either play a second division have a great season you know and you know make sure they'll sign you because they'll see you're the same Gilbert Brown mm -hmm. that was here not real and or you know you keep playing and then you eventually end up here and to say that I thought it was going to happen right away or happen I was unsure because as soon as I signed with Galil Elion the first week I get hurt okay. so I'm out for three weeks with the hamstring injury I come back but Galil doesn't decide to register me to play. So long story short, after a while, they end up cutting me, releasing me. So I stayed out here for about a week. I'm practicing. And Renata decides to sign me. They see me. They're like, what's going on? We we need a player because their uh, big man just got hurt. Okay. So I end up signing with Renata. Uh, I had two, two really big games at the beginning, you know, my second and third game. And that's when the interest from Elok came back. Like, he's he's still the same player. He can still yeah. play. So I played a couple more games with Fernanda, and then eventually I came down here, and they made the decision to sign and bring me in. Which is awesome, and we're very happy uh, for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy, you know. As soon as we get here, we start winning, winning games. Uh, yes, yes. You know, it's an exciting feeling, so I'm glad I got the opportunity. Absolutely. We spoke about it earlier today. Uh, your first game basically was against the Puerto Tel Aviv yes. and uh, away, and uh, and uh, we brought you to help the team. And, and sometimes you see that, and it's a story, but it's not really 
uh, it doesn't pertain that way. And with you, it was awesome because that's exactly how it worked out. You, uh, you scored only five points. The amount of stops you helped us to, to gain because our issue was uh, uh, defense at that. And you helped us with the stops and you helped us with, with things that we didn't have before prior to the time you arrived. And that was, that was great. That was, that was awesome to see. Yeah. Absolutely. One, one thing I feel like, you know, going to the University of Pittsburgh helped me with was to put me in those positions. Like, I know I can go out there and be a scorer. You know, I've proven that. But I've also proven that I could be a defender or a role player if need be. And then coming to a team like this, where there's a lot of talent, a lot of guys that can score the basketball, sometimes instead of trying to force yourself on the game, it's better to just fit in yes. so that the team can work like a well-oiled machine. Like, absolutely. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So that that was that was my mentality coming in here. Cool. Great. And. We're uh, coming up on time. Uh, we have uh, two more things. One is the local uh, uh, basketball or life expression or a custom that you're not happy with or you found out you didn't know before. Like Israeli local? Yes. <sighs> well, the, the custom <laughs> thing is definitely when people tell you to wait. Like, I feel like when they do this, <laughs> yes. it's the most disrespectful thing ever. Yes, because you because go to a different country, that might they might be flipping you off. That might, yes. That means F. In Italy, it's, it's, it's yes. It's not, one thing. In Israel, it's hold on or it's, just a minute. Exactly. Instead of using your words, like, yes. to even sometimes, they won't even give you the eye contact. They'll yeah, just like, look, look to the side. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. that's fine. Absolutely. Let's go with the tip. One tip for a younger stud. Uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, let's say, or in a smaller school, who's now a uh, sophomore or junior, and in Does that years, have to be a basketball tip? Uh, no, it can be a life tip, but it has to be a tip for someone who's in two years would like to sit in your seat. My my main tip, and any advice that I have to give any young kid, especially in college, mm -hmm. especially in college that wants to be a professional player or be anywhere professionally, period. It's about networking, about talking to people, going to going to events, being able to walk into different rooms and being able to hold conversations. I think it's one of the most important things that you can do. Don't isolate yourself in being in one certain, like putting yourself in one box. Like be able to be outside of your box or outside of your comfort zone and be able to exist out there. Mm -hmm. Because then that makes you more of an attractable person, a player, a better teammate. All of these little things, you know, it's like a life tip really that you need to be successful absolutely and uh, i can tell that it helped you tremendously yeah. throughout the years yeah i was always the guy that had to go to every event because my teammates didn't want to go so okay all right if there's an event to go to whether it be like the dapper dan uh event in pittsburgh or a, a speaking engagement things like that i'm the guy to go so yeah i feel like it helped me tremendously absolutely and I'm appreciative of it, really and truly. I'm glad that sometimes, even though I didn't want to go, I was either forced to go or I forced myself to go. Absolutely. So, you awesome. know, that's that's the main thing that I would love, I want to give to younger players. Absolutely. So, uh, you heard what uh, Mr. Brown had to say about uh, networking. Uh, we thank Gilbert Brown for joining us today at the uh, Import of the Week uh, magazine. Uh, as we said, uh, Gil's playing for us here at Delat uh, BC many years before he graduated the uh, University of Pittsburgh. And uh, I had the uh, luck to uh, watch him live in the Golden uh, in the biggest tournament, but that's for another day. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, remember, practice is nothing but a recipe for the game. Work it to perfection. Coach Rangi here. I'll see you around the ring. Bye-bye.